All right, folks, so a quick screencast on the structure of the Minnesota State Legislature. So we've spent the last couple of weeks talking about the structure of our national institution, Congress, and their primary purpose is to make the laws for the entire United States. Well, let's take a few minutes here to talk about the lawmaking institution at the state level in Minnesota. It's at the state capitol over in St. Paul, and it's called the Minnesota State Legislature. Now, this will not be on your unit test but it's good for you to know it does meet a standard. All right, let's move forward. So, similar to Congress, the Minnesota State Legis Legislature is a bicameral institution. Okay, bi meaning two, cameral meaning chambers. So there's two chambers. There's a state senate, which is the upper chamber, and there's a state house, which is the lower chamber. Now, in our state senate, there are 67 state senators. Currently, the Republican Party is the majority party in the state Senate. There are 34 Republicans, there are 31 Democrats, and there are two independents. You will note that we list them as the DFL, because in Minnesota, the Democratic Party is called the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, which is a reflection of federalism. The state party is affiliated with the national party, but they are not one and of the same. Now, Melissa Franson is a Democrat, and she represents Senate District 49, which is all of Edina and most of West Bloomington. Okay, And it's actually Melissa France, and I believe with one S there, Mr. Anderson. Okay, Fun fact, this is the uh, largest upper house of any U.S. state legislature. Okay, So how do we get 67 senators? You know, I actually don't know how. I'm assuming that it was the same progression where we kept adding people and eventually we capped it at 67 and then we just reapportioned those seats every so often, like every 10 years. So the same deal when we have congressional districts, you know, Minnesota is responsible for drawing the map, uh, you know, breaking Minnesota into eight puzzle pieces. So in this case, we break Minnesota into 67 puzzle pieces. So it's a much more complex and intricate puzzle. You will note that as you get to the metro area, our puzzle pieces get geographically smaller. Why? Because the population density increases as you get down to Minneapolis and St. Paul, the metropolitan area. So again, one of the rules in drawing what we call these legislative districts is that they need to be of equal population. You will note that they also need to be contiguous. They all have to be just one single piece, and they should be as compact and square shaped as possible. Otherwise, someone might think that you're gerrymandering. All right. Okay, so here you could see that you could see the congressional districts label as we take in a, a just a closer view of Senate District 49 here. This is Melissa Francis district right here. Okay, and you can see the boundary between Congressional District 3 and Congres Congressional District 5. So our legislative districts don't necessarily align with Congressional districts, but sometimes the borders do happen to be the same. Okay, now we also have a state house of representatives. Okay, and what we do is we have 134 state representatives. You might notice that there's a ratio there. For every senator, we have two representatives. That's exactly how it works. The Democratic Farmer Labor Party is the, currently the majority party in the state house. They have 69 representatives. Republicans have 60. And you will note that there is a new Republican Party in the state of Minnesota. Okay, again, a reflection of federalism. Both the Republican Party and the new Republican Party are associated with the national Republican Party. If you want to know more about the new Republicans, you can click on that link there. Okay, Heather Adelson represents House District 49A, and Steve Elkins represents House District 49B. And that's exact. if you're wondering why A and B, it's because that's what we do. We take Senate District, Senate Legislative District 49, and we divide it into two equal halves, so equal in population. There's 49A, there's 49B, okay? So if we had a map, and here you see a nice little picture of the state house. So if you haven't been to the Capitol to visit, it's a beautiful building, right? Now, the bill-to-law process is the same, okay? That's what's kind of nice here. So a bill has to pass the state house, has to pass the state senate, but then it goes to the governor for his signature or his veto, okay? You see this little board way in the back right here? 
That's where we record the vote. So on every member's desk here, there's three buttons. There's a green button, a red button, and then there's like, there's actually four buttons, I believe. There's a reset button, and then there's a button for choosing not to vote, for like abstaining, if I remember right from the last time I went on a tour of the Capitol. But the board over here keeps track of the green and red votes. It's kind of cool. It's a very archaic system, but it still works, right? Here's our map again. So I believe this is still just the, the Senate district map. So you can imagine that each of these districts is then divided in half into an A and B section. Let me go back and take a look, though. Maybe I'm wrong. So there's the Senate district map, 67 legislative districts. And let's, let's take a look at this up corner up here. Okay, let's see if it looks the same on the next map. Ah, there it is divided in two. So this is the House district map. So this would be the A section. This would possibly be the B section. So we should have 134 districts here and 67 districts here. All right, so what are some other differences between you know, Congress and the state legislature? Well, the term lengths are different. So if you're elected to to serve in the Minnesota House, you also serve a term of two years. But if you're elected to serve in the Minnesota Senate, your term length is only four years. And the way it works is it's not a continuous body at the state level. So every four years, we re-elect the entire Senate. Yeah, all in one shot there. It's pretty cool. There is no filibuster at the Minnesota State Senate. So when we start our Build to Law project and you've been hoping that you're just going to filibuster and just kind of waste everybody's time in class by talking the entire period, doesn't happen. We don't have that rule at the state level. There are rules for debate in the Minnesota Senate. The size of the district is going to be different also. So a Minnesota legislative district, the Senate one, so like Senate District 40, 49, represents about 75,000 people. And in the House, you divide that in half, you represent about 37,000 people. And of course, that's versus at the national level, the Senate, you represent an entire state, and each representative in the United States Cong in the United States House of Representatives represents about 710,000 people, according to the last census. The number of members, completely different. So you, when you add your Minnesota House to your Minnesota Senate, you get 201 total state you know, representatives and senators versus, and that number's wrong, it should be 535. You might remember what 538 is. That's the number of electoral votes. When we get to 538, because Washington, D.C. gets three electoral votes, but Washington, D.C. doesn't have any voting representation in Congress. So the total number of congressmen and women is 535, 100 senators plus the 435 representatives. Another big difference is that the governor has one additional option when a bill start, gets sent to him or her, right? A governor, at least in the state of Minnesota, has the line item veto. So the governor doesn't have to veto the entirety of a bill. There might be one particular section, one particular subdivision that the governor doesn't particularly like, one particular spending item that the governor doesn't particularly like, and he can veto just that part of the bill and let the rest of it become law. The president doesn't have that option. Now, Congress at one point did give that option to the president. It was given to Bill Clinton. He used it once to veto a funding item going to the city of New York, and they sued. They took him all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, nope, that's unconstitutional. The president, according to the Constitution, has to veto the entirety of a piece of legislation. Okay, so only governors can have the line item veto. Salary is different. If you get elected to the Minnesota House or the Minnesota Senate, you get $46,500 per year. You don't work an entire year. It's seen as a part-time job. Whereas if you, would get, if you are elected to Congress, then you're going to make $174,000 a year. And the other big difference is that Minnesota is required to balance its budget. So what that means is that we have to make sure that the money that we spend every year matches the money that we take in. We can't run a deficit, whereas the national government can. 
So like when we're having hard times due to the pandemic, the national government can spend more money than it actually takes in, in taxes. Minnesota can't. So we have to make sure that when we're helping people out here at the state level due to the pandemic, that there's money to do that. Okay? And then, of course, finally, the scope is going to be different. Any law passed by the Minnesota legislature only impacts the state of Minnesota and everybody who resides in it, whereas any law passed by Congress will impact anybody living in the United States and one of its territories. Okay, there you go. That's pretty much it. I don't believe there's another slide. Ten minutes, 11 minutes, and this is kind of just prepping, prepping you for our simulation because you are going to take on the role of a Minnesota senator or a Minnesota representative. You're going to craft a piece of legislation. You're going to introduce it into your chamber, guide it through committee. Hopefully it'll get passed, and then it's going to go over to a different chamber, and we'll see what happens to it. Hopefully your bill will be presented to the governor. And you might have to argue its merits before the governor, and maybe he'll sign it. Maybe he'll veto it. We'll see what happens. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye.